Well, a combination of uh, various factors. Uh, the, the first is that um, I understand what every responsible government should do. In any part of the world, governments are there to provide for the people. And aside providing for the people, they must also provide an enabling environment for those who want to do things on their own. So there are basic two functions for me that are so fundamental. But you see, in Nigeria, government don't think that they are responsible for the people, especially for the vulnerable. I mean, how do disabled people survive? You know, how do um, uh, unemployed people survive? You know, what can the government do to make sure that there's dignity, uh, you know, amongst this class of people? I mean, this function, this duty to provide for the uh, people must be taken seriously. It's, it's not just something you do by way of a, a show of sympathy. You know, that this is what I see from the Ministry of uh, Humanitarian Affairs um, activities. You know, they, they make some billions available to the, the ministry and then they... They're like the government charity, basically. They, no, no, it's, 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 even, it's, it's, it's worse than that. Hello, how are you? Welcome to CEO Making Choices. My name is Choice Ufuma Okoro. And um, in this channel, I, I correct misrepresentations of Africa and Africans. And I'm a Nigerian and do a lot when it relates to Nigeria. In this particular case, I am really endorsing what Nigeria Senator Ned Nwoko said regarding the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs in Nigeria. I agree 100% with him. It is a wrong, embarrassing, humiliating ministry in Nigeria. This is why. And I speak on this issue having worked within international humanitarian systems in many countries around the world in the last 15 years. The word humanitarianism has become very popular in Nigeria where rice is donated, when a food security policy should be enacted, where Nigerians, who are the taxpayers of public figures, elected officials, you know, the taxpayers are treated literally like a charity caseloads for those who've paid. So the people who've paid the salaries of elected officials to take care of them are now treating them like charity caseloads. Humanitarianism connotes and states that a government is not able to take care of its citizens officially within the mandate it's been given. So the long fellow Africans, especially in this case Nigerians, and this is increasing as humanitarian caseloads. We have a situation where Ukraine, in the midst of war, Ukraine has a population of 38 million, is donating aid, food aid, to Nigeria, a country of 220 million people. That's embarrassing. The height of lack of respect for the citizens of Nigeria. Now, let me explain. A responsible, dignified country has systems that manage emergencies and disasters. Nigeria has one. That is the National Emergency Management Agency. Please allow me to emphasize that I do not have any allegiance to any of this. I speak from a context of global international experience in what humanitarianism is and how it is used in terms of policy. It is a global issue. Now, Nigeria has the National Emergency Management Agency. That is the respectful, dignified system that manages emergencies in a country. The whole Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs came about in 2015, and I served in, in Nigeria as the head of the International UN System, International Humanitarian System in Nigeria. And I was, I, I, was, I, I dis disagreed with it. I refused to accept it, and I continue to today because it's an insult on the dignity of Nigerians. Now think, international humanitarianism or humanitarianism in fairs, there are people who you do not have any obligation to, 
You don't have any responsibility to them, but out of the generosity and kindness of your heart, you are giving them. It's charity. So having a Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs in Nigeria, a national entity, connotes that the government of Nigeria, number one, is treating Nigerians as charity cases. That is their obligation to serve citizens who elected them into office, citizens whose tax they use to pay their salaries. They are not saying, you are charity cases. You may have elected me into office. You may pay my salary, but I'll treat you as a charity caseload. That's what it means to have a Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs in a country. And secondly, even more dangerous, it says that a government, elected government have said that they do not have the capacity. They cannot take care of the responsibility, the jobs that have been given to them. They cannot do it. So they've relegated it to the international community because around 2015, when the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs was established in Nigeria, Running along that is Nigeria became one of the many countries dominated by African countries around the world who go begging every year for international humanitarian aid. It doesn't come in cash. It comes with the dumping of excessive grains in many countries into Nigeria. There are many countries that don't beg. They, out of the, the, the many countries, over 50 countries in Africa, only about 20 22 countries from Africa make the list and they top it around the world. Nigeria, the purported, purported giant of Africa, goes every year amongst newer countries like South Sudan to go back for international humanitarian aid, which comes in grains. So Nigeria has humiliated itself so much that Ukraine, in the midst of war, is donating humanitarian assisted aid providing humanitarian assistance to Nigeria, the, purport, the, the supposed, you know, giant of Africa. Let's get our act together, Nigeria. We're talking about the dignity of the continent of Africa, and Nigeria is supposed to be the giant, the economic power base for this continent. Our inability to, 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 to stand in dignity is impacting on the whole of Africa. This has to stop. Scrap the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. Thank you, Senator Ned Nwoko. I do not be belong to any political party in, in Nigeria, in, Af in any part of the world. But I always celebrate good leadership when I see it. When I see it operating. And Senator Ned Nwoko demonstrated this today in this Arise News interview. Thank you for watching. And please, subscribe. Thank you.